This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama, horror, and sci-fi show called The Twilight Zone. 8. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In Antarctica, a group of scientists investigates how the thinning of marginal ice allows more sunlight to penetrate the subsurface ocean levels. This increases the shallow water sea life population, which then leads to deep sea predators migrating to shallower levels to search for food. Most of these predators have never been discovered before, so the scientists monitor and document these creatures. Leading the crew is Dr. Orson Rudd, who misses his family. Still, he holds on to the idea that his work is saving lives. Nearing their fifth month at the Navy Science Station, the team becomes bored of their isolation. Yannick smokes in his cabin while their electrician, Larry, watches documentaries about sea life. Seeing her bored in her cabin, Rudd checks in on Channing via text, so she searches for her phone and replies that the months of no sunlight are finally getting to her. Dr. Ling, who doesn't speak English, asks if they found a new species today. Using her phone to translate their conversation to each other, Channing tells her that their divers haven't returned yet, so they don't know if they found any. Overhearing this, Rudd notices that the divers should be back by now. At their diving hut nearby, their fellow scientist, Amy, is waiting for the divers to return when Casper's hand suddenly shoots out from the diving hole. Grunting, he struggles to get up as something pulls him from under. She tries to pull him up as he stabs something in the water. Despite her efforts, Amy isn't able to pull him to the surface, and suddenly, Casper's blood spews out from the water, covering the tent. With one strong tug, Amy is also pulled into the water, which is now red with blood. Moments later, something emerges emerges from the diving hole and hides inside the diver's cooler. Worried that they aren't back yet, Rudd checks the diving hut and finds the bloody mess. He calls the rest of the crew in to investigate what happened. Immediately, Yannick starts gearing up, but Rudd can't risk losing him too, as he's the only trained diver they have left. He insists that they can't go into the water until they figure out what happened to the others, but Yannick argues that they can't figure that out if they don't go in. Suddenly, the cooler starts sloshing around, getting everyone's attention. Carefully, Rudd opens it and finds a large octopus inside. Larry suggests throwing it back into the ocean, but Ling insists on taking it to the lab to study it instead. Channing agrees, but Yannick would rather look for their crewmates. He points out that despite their diving gear, the others will die soon if they don't retrieve them. Channing notices that their monitor's visibility is back, so Rudd allows Yannick to go in while he and Channing will support him from the tent. At the same time, Larry assists Ling in transporting the octopus into the lab. While Larry transfers the octopus into a tank, Yannick dives into the icy water. While monitoring Yannick's progress, Rudd points out how Ling was protective of the octopus, but Channing just thinks that Ling cares about their project. Still, Rudd brings up that Ling might know about their secret. He reminds her not to say anything to anyone, and she promises not to. Suddenly, Channing notices something pass by their cameras. Before they can investigate, a body floats to the surface, startling them. Yannick also emerges and helps them take the body out. They soon return to the station, where Yannick notes how Casper sustained multiple injuries, and his respirator was ripped out, causing him to drown. He adds that if Amy fell into the water without diving gear, she would have died within 10 minutes. Still, they can't figure out what happened to them. Larry and Yannick agree that the octopus killed their crewmates. Larry adds that octopuses are intelligent and have been around for thousands of years. Focusing on getting things done, Rudd interrupts him and shares his plans to call for an emergency response team once their satellite is in range. However, Ling takes the floor, so Channing puts her phone on speaker to help translate her words. She explains that the octopus is a new species whose radula is made of a tougher substance than normal. She points out that their mission is to save species that have been affected by human behavior, so keeping the octopus safe and documenting it is part of their job. Still, Yannick wants to dissect the creature, so he takes a scalpel. Before he can approach, water shoots out from the tank, causing a light fixture to spark, thus plunging the lab into darkness. Everyone Everyone is stunned as they look at the octopus, all believing that it did that on purpose. Without commenting on it, Rudd orders the crew to seal and preserve Casper's body in the diving hut until backup arrives. He also asks Larry to fix the lights in the lab, but Larry isn't comfortable staying in the lab alone with the octopus. Hearing this, Ling reminds them that both humans and octopuses were nothing but flatworms millions of years ago. Humans know that evolution separated them, but she asserts that the octopus doesn't know that. That's why humans rule the world, and the creatures can only witness this. With that, Rudd advises Larry to just stay away from the octopus to be safe. While the others are busy, Rudd confronts Channing, noting that the octopus is what they've been looking for 
Troxel, the company that hired them, sent the two to find a species from whom they could extract chemicals to create pain medications. During this, Liying notices that Channing left her phone, which is now transmitting Rudd's words to her, allowing Liying to listen in. Having heard enough, she locks the phone and pockets it. While Yannick brings Casper's body into the diving hut, Channing composes an email to Troxel to confirm that they've captured the creature. However, Liying walks into the room before she can send it. After she leaves, Channing sends the email, but there's a five minute delay as they wait for the satellite to be available. Liying heads to her room and unlocks Channing's phone to continue listening to their conversation. She hears that Channing is hesitant about the mission, opting to just put the octopus back in the water. However, Rudd refuses uses. Meanwhile, Larry works at the lab while listening to music. Sensing the octopus watching him, he prepares a knife on his table, just in case. In the control room, Channing suggests letting Larry and Yannick kill it and pretend that they tried to stop them. In her room, Ling struggles to listen in as whale sounds echo from her window. At the lab, Larry continues working, unaware that the octopus has detached one of the tank's pipes to escape and slither toward him. Meanwhile, Yannick notices slime pouring from Casper's discarded gear. This convinces him that the octopus killed his crewmate, so he heads back to the station with a knife in hand. When he reaches the lab, Yannick finds Larry still at his work table. He notices the broken pipe and tells Larry about it, but the man isn't responding. He reaches for his crewmate, only to get slime on his hand. Finally, the octopus appears, having camouflaged itself around Larry's dead body. Before he could react, the octopus strangles Yannick, but he's able to stab its tentacle to release himself. Still, it reaches at him with another tentacle, and its suckers bite into his face. Yannick forces it off of him, but it ends up pulling out his eyeball. This causes him to bleed out and die. With the satellite activating soon, Lean continues to listen in on Rudd and Channing's conversation while she sends her own message to her employers. The satellite activates, but they need to verify their access through Channing's phone, so she searches for it. Hearing this, Ling hides the phone under her blanket. Channing steps into the lab and finds Larry's and Yannick's dead bodies, along with a severed tentacle. Hearing her panic, Ling leaves her room before the octopus emerges from her vent. She and Rudd check the lab. And when Ling speaks, Channing overhears her phone translating her words from Ling's room. Channing heads to Ling's room, but doesn't find her phone, even when she checks under the covers. Instead, she only spots the open vent. Going back to the lab, Channing hears Rudd deciding to kill the octopus, but Ling is against it. Channing points out that she heard her phone from Ling's room, accusing the woman of eavesdropping on their conversation. Ling doesn't bother lying, so she declares that the Chinese delegation knew about Troxel's interest in the octopus months before they even arrived at the station. They hear the translation from the air ducts, leading Channing to deduce that the octopus took her phone. Suddenly, the lab projector shows Ling's email to her employers, revealing that she had already sent them a report about the octopus. Channing notes that both their laptop and the projector can be accessed by her phone. With this, she believes the octopus managed to break into Ling's laptop and read through her research about itself. Seeing her research, Rudd asks Ling what she was looking into the octopus for. As they interrogate her, the octopus opens more files from Ling's laptop. So Rudd realizes that the octopus also wants to know what Ling was up to. Reading her research, Rudd concludes that she was investigating the octopus' physical mechanisms to integrate its capability into humans. This would lead to the creation of artificial skin that might also be capable of invisibility cloaking. Ling finally reveals that she intends to use the animal's genes for human evolution. She notes that it's no different than what they intended to do, but Rudd defends that the medicine they wanted to develop could save lives. As they continue to argue, Channing listens to the octopus movements in the pipes. Rudd stresses that Ling's intention is to engineer the octopus gene into humans, so their skin can react to stimuli without the need for a central nervous system. He adds that this could allow humans to camouflage and live in the oceans while still being able to control the land. This makes him realize the dangers of their research, so he asserts that both their employers want to take advantage of the creature's abilities that humans don't have. This is something that humans have been doing for so long. Therefore, Rudd finally decides to put the octopus back into the water and go home. Suddenly, the octopus appears above Channing and grabs her arm, making her drop her knife. It then throws her down and strangles her with its tentacle, so Rudd hurriedly goes to save her. As he cuts through the tentacles, Ling watches the events in horror. 
Finally, Rudd frees Channing and pulls her out of the lab. Ling, who remains inside, watches as the octopus retreats back into the pipes. She listens to it moving above them, until it drops Channing's phone. Before Ling can approach the device, she hears the octopus continuously moving in the pipes. She realizes that it's slithering into the pipe that connects their tanks to the ocean, which it uses to return to its habitat. From the projector, they find that the octopus hacked into Ling's laptop to change the DNA sequence that she recorded. Seeing the sequence's construction, Rudd notes that the octopus has figured out how to reverse their plans, and allow a genetic mutation to manipulate the octopus' DNA instead. This would allow the octopus and its kind to mimic human physical attributes, thus letting them survive on land. If this were to happen, the ocean creatures would turn the tables on the humans and end their species instead. As he discusses this, the octopus begins its mutation, following the genetic sequence that it created using Ling's research. Meanwhile, the scientists are left to realize that they've just served the human species on a silver platter. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.